Welcome back to the Rose Bowl. I assume everybody's been here before, yeah? yeah? Has anybody not been here? Raise your hand. Or don't, because you're probably embarrassed to do that in front of this group. Uh, my name is Deedon Brozino. I'm the president of the Rose Bowl Legacy Foundation. We're the nonprofit organization that raises money to protect this place after 101 years. Um, on behalf of our stadium CEO, Jens Wyden, the Rose Bowl Operating Company, the Rose Bowl Legacy Foundation Board of Directors, we welcome you back. It's a beautiful afternoon. Um, today is the ultimate, ultimate tribute. This is the fourth statue on our property after 101 years, and they're all very, very deserving. You're going to hear about who they are if you don't already know. Josh is going to walk us through it. But it's another special day and an acknowledgement of a lasting legacy on this iconic campus. And what a cool location. Right behind me to my left, players walking by, coaches. It's available to the fans. Just an awesome, awesome, awesome spot. Chancellor Chuck Young moved the Bruins to the Rose Bowl in 1982. That gave the Rose Bowl Stadium one of its biggest days in those 101 years. Getting that second anchor tenant was so, so huge. And to have Coach Donahue's memorial be right across from uh, Chancellor Young's locker room naming, we miss them both dearly. We know they're with us today in spirit and, and in many, many other ways. We're excited for this location and what's going to happen. Coach Donahue lives on everywhere around this place. His name's on the pavilion. The stories you all share, the stories we share together, the lessons we pass on, the lessons we learn from him. And even with the coaching staff in today's game, Coach Kelly and his staff have been so tremendous in, in carrying Terry's legacy forward and Jackie's legacy forward and instilling those values that those men still teach us today into the, to the young men over in Westwood. It's so special. What you're going to see today is Terry standing amongst 151 roses. Those roses mean a lot. We've had nearly 100 donors give to this, this project. Those donors signify his home wins, his road wins, the bowl game wins, the Rose Bowl game wins, and even the conference titles. And so many of his former players contributed to that. We can't thank you enough. Please give yourself a round of applause. It means a lot to us. You know, there's so many people to thank, too many to name. But quickly, we're going to give it a, we're going to give it a shot. I want to give a quick thank you to the Legacy Foundation team, uh, Brian Brantley, Kelly Gill, Claire Cornejo, our, our intern army. They're around here somewhere. The, the fact that you all allowed us to manage these relationships with you to support this project means an awful lot. I especially want to thank Kelly. Where's Kelly? Where is she? Kelly's over here to my right. Kelly is a big, big reason that the heartbeat of this project is, is here for our unveiling today. Thanks to UCLA and, and Martin and Josh and the whole whole staff over there, Chip, for supporting this process the way you guys have. It's so awesome to have you all as our, as our home team here in Pasadena. I want to thank the Tournament of Roses for helping us honor a Rose Bowl Hall of Famer today. Huge deal. Terry was actually the first person to participate in a Rose Bowl game as a player, an assistant coach, and a coach. That's really, really cool stat. Thank you to the RBOC and the City Council for continuing to believe and support this stadium and why it's important for this vibrant community. It means so much to us. And lastly, thank you to the Donahue family. Um, Andrea, everybody, the extended family. It means a lot to us that you would trust us with a project like this. So enjoy it today. We're very, very grateful. All right, we're going to have some fun. This, this, is, this is a happy day. We're going to have some fun today. So I want to introduce Josh Loon. You guys know him as the voice of UCLA football. In men's basketball, he's a vet in this industry. He's a, he's a veteran broadcaster. He's been the play-by-play -play voice of the Chargers, 21 seasons in Major League Baseball, the NHL, and we're lucky, lucky to have him here as the voice of our UCLA Bruins. So please welcome Josh Lewin. It is a thrill to be here anytime at the Rose Bowl, but especially for something like today. For those that, that haven't heard the story, I was seven years old when I decided I wanted to be the voice of UCLA growing up in Rochester, New York. And it's because my last name rhymes with Bruin. Uh, I wanted to be Josh Lewin, voice of the Bruins. I thought that'd be really cool. And to, to realize that dream uh, many years later, uh, a, a really cool thing for me personally, I thank all of you uh, for, for inviting me and Matt Stevens and Wayne Cook into your homes and car radios every Saturday. We're gonna have a great time bringing home a victory here tomorrow afternoon. So the... Uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is, I never had the pleasure uh, of working with Coach Terry Donahue, although would you believe my cousin Dennis did. Uh, Dennis Lewin was a producer at ABC Sports. 
He was Keith Jackson's producer for several years. So he was in on those pregame meetings with Coach Donahue, usually right around this time of day on Friday afternoons as Keith prepared to tell America about those powerhouse teams that that Terry coach. So it's an honor for me. I thank Deedon, I thank uh, Jens, and everyone here at the Rose Bowl for extending the invitation. Our plan is very simple here today. After we hear from our esteemed speakers, uh, the Terry Donahue statue will officially join the other statue tributes on these grounds, all of which represent those who educated and inspired and acknowledged this uh, very special 101-year history uh, of this iconic venue. The other statues, if you're not aware, uh, number one, Jackie Robinson, located in a prime location here, native of Pasadena, uh, Pasadena, you know all about his iconic stature in these United States of America. Uh, number two, uh, the 1999 Team USA Women's World Cup champions with Brandy Chastain, located in Area H among the youth and athletic fields here, uh, symbolizes one of the most important moments in female athletics in, in U.S. And, and maybe world sports history. It took place right here in 1999. Number three, the aforementioned, or aforementioned Keith Jackson, whoa, Nelly, located in the Rose Bowl Plaza outside of Gate A, the voice of college football that we all still hear in our heads. He's the one that coined the term the granddaddy of them all for the game we're all going to be attending here on January 1st. And now, Terry Donahue, very soon just behind me, the Coach Donahue statue will be unveiled. I think it's, a, as Deedon said, the perfect spot for it right here. Uh, and I think it's fair to say that, that statues are not for every moment or for every person. It takes a special impact and legacy to get to this point, and Terry Donahue is certainly more than deserving. It's not just 151 wins. It's the kindness with which he served his 20 years in this esteemed coaching position. Terry Donahue, who led UCLA to five top 10 finishes between 82 and 88 alone, we love that. The Bruins played in nine major bowl games. They won seven of them. That's more than LSU, Texas, Georgia, and Clemson in that time. And for those that don't know, I think this is kind of instructive and important. You know, Terry was a local product, Notre Dame High School in Sherman Oaks, a defensive savant as a player and a coach. He was a defensive tackle who played at 195 pounds for UCLA as a walk-on. So you can argue, I think, successfully that of all the gutty little Bruins back in the day, no one personified that thought better than this great competitor. And I've been told his battle cry for the defense when he played he would say, let's plant the flag. So today, we plant that blue and gold flag in his honor, and it's cast in bronze to stand forever. We'll get the motor running now. I know we all want to see what a bronze Terry Donahue looks like, although we all kind of know what that looks like anyway. Uh, <laughs> the George Hamilton tan always gave him away. So this is a different shade of bronze that we'll be showing you. Um, our, our first speaker is the Alice and Nam Liner Family Director of Athletics at UCLA, the ninth athletic director in UCLA history. Uh, through this man's leadership, he has led UCLA athletics through a labyrinth of uh, pretty bizarre stuff, and it's all come out smelling like, dare I say, uh, roses right now. His first few years at Westwood, UCLA has already added three more NCAA championships to that ever-growing list. We know there are several more championships to come. The Bruins are positioned to join the Big Ten next season, thanks largely to his vision and ability to make things happen. It's my pleasure to introduce the dynamic, the fascinating Westwood's very own now, Martin Jarman. I'm going to keep my comments brief because I, I really want to hear from the, the former players. Um, on behalf of Coach Kelly, our athletics program, UCLA, I just want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, thank you to all the donors who contributed to this. Um, this is a very special day, very special moment. Um, and and I, I just think that it's um, especial with it being homecoming week here at UCLA. Um, and we lost another legend in Chancellor Meredith Young on Sunday with the wreath right there. And then Coach's statue being right here. I just think this is a special, a special moment. So um, thank you uh, for your love and support of, of, of athletics, of UCLA. This is home. Um, there's so many special memories at the Rose Bowl. And I think that it's going to be really special with the statue being here. And this is where all the families of the players convene, where the guys come in. It's the first thing they're going to see. And I love that plant the flag. I love that plant the flag. I never heard that before. Um, but I, I challenge all of us to, uh, to plant the flag. Coach meant a lot to everybody, his values, the person that he was. 
that's a challenge to all of us to uphold those values of being a Bruin. He is what it meant to be a Bruin. And um, this is just an honor and it's special for us to, to have this day and special. And to Andrea and the Donahue family, thank you so much. Um, you're always in our hearts. I love that you're going to be our honorary captain tomorrow. So we're going to be successful. And, uh, and just thank you so much for all the love and support that you've given our program um, and continue to be a part of it. So um, thank you, Josh. Thank you. Dean, Jens, thank you so much, everybody that gave to this. And I want to hear from the former players. Go Bruins. Thank you to Martin for everything. Um, our next guest, the star nose guard for Coach Donahue from 1984 to 87, played his home games right here at the Rose Bowl, three-time all-conference defensive lineman before getting into coaching and now college athletics administration. Currently the athletic director at Fresno State, a school whose football team came in here and stole one three years ago, that's another thing. Uh, a political science graduate in Westwood, also has his MBA from UCLA. Still the fifth leading sack man in the history of the program if Leatu Latu doesn't get a half a dozen tomorrow against Colorado, which I'm not saying it's not going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Terry Toomey. You know, being a country boy from Fresno now, I'm still not used to LA traffic. You know, it's a little tough. Uh, if I could, please, I'd like to just take a moment and acknowledge the, uh, the passing of uh, one of our nation's most courageous and forthright academic leaders, my chancellor, uh, Chuck Young. Um, he will ever be for remembered, and we are indebted to him for the access that he gave so many different people. So I just wanted to take a moment to do that before I talked about my legendary coach. So uh, thank you so much. I stand here today before you uh, to mark a crowning achievement in a legendary coach's life. As the leadership of UCLA in football, from 1976 to 1995, Coach Terry Donahue amassed the most wins of any coach in UCLA history over his career. And as a member of Coach Donahue's team, during that majestic run, and the amazing successes that we had in, in both wins and in bowls, this could only be defined for me as the Camelot of UCLA football. And we were the beneficiaries of an amazing period of time. We owed so much of our success to our coach, Terry Donahue. But as a young man, I had the opportunity to be welcomed into the Donahue family uh, in multiple phases. As a student athlete, under the tutelage of an amazing band of brothers that he had as coaches. Greg Robinson, Bobby Field, Tom Hayes. As you can tell, I'm mentioning the defensive guys. <laughs> as a, an assistant coach, I was able to witness his firsthand coach's dedication and his relentless pursuits to the student athlete experience. And of course, as an administrator, I was also able to see firsthand his cunning and his ability to be an entrepreneur in a place that should have had a lot of resources, but candidly did not. Like many of you, I was invited to the Donahue family. I was one of hundreds, if not thousands, of adopted sons. A heartfelt thank you to the, to the women of the Donahue family. <laughs> Andrea, Nicole, Michelle, Jennifer. Thank you for putting up with us. Coach was my mentor, a consult, a teacher, and most importantly, a beloved friend and dear, fr and dear leader. To define Coach merely by the successes that he had on the field, on the gridiron, is not to bear witness to the greatness that he had in every facet of his life. Like many of you who knew Coach, I always felt comfortably aligned with him, whether we shared an opinion and if you knew TD or if you didn't. Which is interesting when you think about how diametrically opposed our backgrounds were. I, a young black man raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where if you haven't heard recently, there was racial unrest that stood as the bedrock of what our history was there. A first generation kid whose parents saw football as a pathway 
for an opportunity for bettering our lives. As opposed to Coach, the son of a physician, residing here in the valley, beautiful Southern California, and surrounded by a rather large family. We did have commonalities, though. I believe our parents had the amazing epiphanies of both naming us Terrence. <laughs> An outstanding choice. And most importantly, we both were surrounded by families full of faith and love. But there was one trait that I think propelled Coach to the likes of where we see him today and, aligned, and he aligned himself with people who felt that same way. If you didn't understand the aptitude of Coach Donahue, Terry Donahue liked a good fight. <laughs> he was relentless. He relished and enjoyed the spirit of competition. Make no mistake, underneath that corded V-neck sweat, tennis sweater was the guttiest of little Bruins. And believe it or not, because of that, we have another thing in common. We both were D linemen. Very important to be a defensive lineman here at UCLA. So it is amazingly fitting that we memorialize and, and symbolize Terry Donahue and remember forever that he will be at the front of the hallowed halls of this fine and the, one of the finest and most iconic venues in America, the Rose Bowl a bastion of competition and where the human spirit is celebrated. But I also want patrons and, and, and visitors and competitors to harken back on what was most important to remember is that Coach was keen on one thing and one thing only. His gift was his investment in others. Although Coach chose the medium of football to share his gift, Terry Donahue spent his, the entirety of his life and in multiple ways, bettering people at every turn, whether welcoming young men from across the nation to this great and amazing academic institution we call UCLA, or whether it was opening gateways for academics, for young people all throughout Southern California in the California Showcase. Terry Donahue's gift was that of an educator and an investor in our national community. And with that, when we lay our eyes on Coach Donahue, we will be viewing not only one of the greatest coaches in our history, but what I would deem one of college football's greatest humanitarians. Thank you. So with that, I want to thank the city of Pasadena, of course, for uh, allowing us to be here today. And I definitely want to pay homage and pay tribute and thank the leadership of the Rose Bowl. I don't know if I could have been a part of something more glorious than to be here honoring my coach. As we think about Terry, and as I look at all the, my brothers out there, and I think about the education he gave to us, he had one thing that he would tell us that didn't make much sense back when I was a young kid at 17, but it does make sense today. I do think our coach has reached the crescendo. How many of us remember that? He would tell us that, reach the crescendo, be an artist out there. And I think he's done that. So with that, I wanna thank you for allowing me to be here with you today. I wanna thank you for allowing me to honor our coach. I can tell you one thing, the excellence of the Rose Bowl has been supported and fortified by bringing in one of the most excellent people I've ever known. I cannot wait to see the permanent residency of our coach, Terry Donahue. Thank you so much. Uh, next to speak, college football and Rose Bowl Hall of Fame member, quarterback of the Bruins from 95 to 98, led a prolific, I mean prolific offense that averaged more than 40 points a game. And this guy never, never, never lost to the team across town. Never happened. He was 4-0 against the Trojans. So if nothing else, we say he's a wonderful gentleman for that. There are many other reasons. But ladies and gentlemen, Cade McNown. So you'll probably hear some consistent themes when people are talking about Coach Donahue. So, you know, Terry always steals the thunder, but that's okay. I'll 
it's going to be a lot of the same stuff, but uh, he was a consistent man. Um, so anyway, thanks to all of you for coming out here today. Um, my name is, as Josh said, is Cade McNown. Um, I can't put into words how honored I am to be up here uh, speaking, having been asked by Andrea to come and do this. Um, you know, talking about Coach Donahue's a, a, a big deal, so uh, thank you. Uh, I also want to say thanks to the Rose Bowl, as well as Deed and Brazino and the Legacy Foundation uh, for their tremendous work in putting this together. Coach Donahue uh, recruited me in 1995 out of high school, and I had the privilege of being UCLA's uh, quarterback during what turned out to be his final season uh, as UCLA's head coach. Um, although I was just a freshman, uh, I only got to have him for one, you know, one year as my head coach. Our friendship really continued on uh, and remained strong for the rest of his life. To me, Terry Donahue wasn't only a great football player, I'm uh, sorry, uh, football player and coach. He was a mentor, a teacher, a father, uh, a father figure, sorry, and an inspiration, a man of strong faith, and the ultimate head football coach. Most people know about Coach Donahue's statistics as a head coach, uh, the 151 career wins at UCLA, eight bowl wins back when it was actually really hard to get into a bowl game. Uh, a lot of the guys who played on those teams are here today. Um, including three Rose Bowl wins over a four-year stretch, which is just incredible. Uh, but Terry Donahue is also a, a great football player, as we know. He's, uh, his 1965 team uh, was, was UCLA's first to win the Rose Bowl. Um, you know, he was, he was the original gutty little Bruin, playing defensive lineman at the highest level of college football at 190 pounds. I mean, you've got to be, you gotta be tough. Uh, to do that. But he wasn't just physically tough, he was mentally tough as well. He was able to instill that toughness in others, including his daughters. Uh, <laughs> he also had the ability to convince everyone around him that they could really do whatever they put their mind to. He taught his players and coaches how to focus on the task at hand and to approach the game one play at a time. All those who played for him were consistently reminded you're never as good as people say you are, you're never as bad as people say you are. You know, you're probably somewhere in the middle. <laughs> he was always focused on keeping his players even keeled so their highs wouldn't be too high nor their lows too low. Coach Donahue was a family man. He was a husband, a father to three wonderful daughters, a father-in-law to three uh, great guys. Uh, and, uh, and grandfather to 10 grandchildren. Uh, Coach Donahue invested his time and energy in his family. And although his commitment to coaching uh, took up certainly most of his time, uh, he always prioritized family in his life. He was also a man of faith, faith in God. He demonstrated that faith by the way he lived, by example. Terry Donahue didn't do a lot of preaching. He did a lot of teaching. Uh, but his teaching was rooted in his faith. He believed in giving people opportunity. As, as you'll hear, if anybody talks about Coach Donahue, it's about, about opportunity. Um, and he certainly gave me an opportunity uh, for, for which I'm, I'm forever grateful. But I'm just one of the thousands he impacted. Uh, many of you know that Coach Donahue created the California Showcase. Uh, so high school seniors and junior college transfers would have the opportunity to display their skills to NCAA Division II, III, and NAIA uh, football programs with the goal of earning a scholarship. As a result of that effort, uh, to date, over 1,100 student athletes have earned $40 million in financial aid uh, to attend college. Yeah, deserves a round of applause. You know, as, as Coach Donnie, who's often quoted saying, opportunity is one of the most precious gifts of life and how often we can provide it, I'm sorry, and when it is, uh, how we respond when it's given to us and how often we can provide it to others uh, can define our lives. In, uh, in closing, I just wanna say, uh, you know, I really, really miss Coach Donahue. Um, I miss our time together. I miss the advice he'd give me and uh, the way he did it. And, uh, uh, the way he always wanted to know 
uh, how I was doing, how my family was doing, you know, how's your mom doing, how's your wife doing, how are your kids doing. You know, he really knew how to connect uh, with people, and he understood what it took to be great. Um, he knew how to bring that out of others as well. Uh, it's my hope that this statue will inspire those who see it uh, to learn about Coach Donahue and the impact he made on so many people uh, and to try to follow his example. Thank you. 151 wins, 151 roses. I promise not 151 speakers. The, the ones that have, have spoken have done so, so beautifully and so eloquently. Uh, we have a couple more players that will come up. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that someone has sprinted across town to be here, who really wanted to be here, want to bring him up uh, for a, a minute or two as well. The mayor of uh, Pasadena is here. Victor Gordo, ladies and gentlemen, Pasadena's very own. What an honor it is to be here today as mayor of Pasadena. Um, I'm also joined by my colleague, Steve Madison, who is here. Uh, I don't know if he's been introduced, but certainly Senator Portentino uh, is here. And we're all here on behalf of the city of Pasadena to honor a great coach. Um, but not only a great coach, a great man. You know, I, I stand here uh, now as mayor of Pasadena, but I've not always been the mayor of Pasadena. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the measures that I look to, that I try and instill in my kids, is how do people treat you before you have that title? How do people... Uh, interact with you before you become the mayor. Well, I started my career here in the city of Pasadena as a field representative, as someone working for an elected official, someone who didn't have the title of an elected official, let alone the mayor of Pasadena. And I had the honor of working uh, and knowing Coach Donahue at that point in time. And I can tell you that he treated me with dignity, with respect, uh, with the honor and presence that he treated my boss, who was the elected official with. Um, and he treated me the same when I became the mayor of Pasadena. Now that is the measure of a great human being. And that's why when I listen to the players talk, uh, Cade and company, um, talk about what a great coach he is, I can see that because of the way he treated me when I was not mayor of Pasadena and the way he treated me when I was mayor of Pasadena, it was one and the same. The other thing is Doc, his father. You can see where Coach Donahue got it from, Doc Donahue. Uh, to understand Doc Donahue's uh, legacy and what he did for the clergy at Notre Dame and at his parish, um, treating them and helping them pro bono. You can see where Coach Donahue's principles were instilled. You can see where he became not just the man and the, the person that he was and is, but the coach that brought out so much in a kind, caring, but deliberate way out of his players. And so today, together with my colleagues from the city of Pasadena, and on behalf of every resident of the city of Pasadena, I say thank you, Coach Donahue, for being the person and the human and the coach that you are. And thank you for contributing so much and touching so many. And to the Donahue family, what a man, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a cousin, an uncle, uh, but most of all, what a man. Congratulations, and we thank you uh, as residents of Pasadena. I've always said, you know, the best gift, I've repeated, I should say, I didn't say it, I've repeated what I was told. The best gift we can give to one another is the gift of friendship. And thank you to the Donahue family for giving Pasadena the gift of friendship of Coach Donahue. A couple other speakers for you before we do a little unveiling. Uh, next is a two-time All-American, tight end for UCLA, beginning in 1986 before heading off to the NFL. He's still on the air as an analyst, still talking about the game he loves, a guy I've had the pleasure of working with and learning from myself. 
Troy Aikman security blanket for two years at this stadium, an electric receiver, hell of a blocker too. Charles Arbuckle. Uh, it's going to be hard to follow Terry Toomey, of course, and Cade because they're so great. But I just want to say thank you to the Donahue family for allowing me to speak or being voluntold to speak. When, when you get a message or a call from Yaya, Miss Andrea, you don't say no. You can't say no. So I appreciate it. And really, thank you to all the family, because they've been so special to me through the course of my career. Uh, I also want to say thanks to the Rose Bowl. What better venue? Not just for games, but when you just come out here, when you're being recruited by this school, when anything is happening, you can't beat this place. And I tell people that all the time. I think America's finally realizing what this is. Keith Jackson made it special. All the people understand, but you guys that have been around this program understand how great this place is. Growing up in Houston, Texas, getting Coach Donahue and Bill Reese to come in the house and, you know, this tan man comes in and, you know, me and my mom are sitting there and I'm like, I'm thinking, he's got some swag to him. We didn't call it swag then, but whatever it was, he had. He's like, yeah, Miss Miles, I'm going to take care of your son. I'm going to take care of him. And one of the things I want you to understand is that he'll get a great education, which I got. Talked about four versus 40. I think we all understand that if you got a degree from UCLA. When people ask you about UCLA, how is it? How often do you just think and say, I can't really tell you? I can tell you, but I just can't really make you feel what I felt. We each had that experience, and I can attest to folks that have been here, married, their wives, now have kids, watch kids grow up, grow up like the Donahue family. So those things are special. But when he recruited me, he also said, hey, you're going to make some plays. That got me excited. That got everybody excited, right? Because you want to play. But early in my career, I was getting some injuries. And I didn't know quite what that was going to lead to. But the one thing that this man did to me is set me down and said, look, I don't care how long you play. That's going to be important. But the important thing is that you get this degree. And at the time, I'm going to tell you, I was struggling. Struggling from the sense of not putting all the effort I could into academics, thinking it was only going to be, I'm playing ball. I'm going to the league. I'm watching all these other guys here do that. Got me refocused. Got me on, on path. Got me to get my degree and get to the league, fortunately. But I say the other thing is meeting my wife here. My, da my daughter's here. My son isn't. But having a family of Bruins, even though she went somewhere else. I'll say Michigan, but that's OK. But anyway, I say that to say this family is much more important than any family I could ever have. My family is great. But this Bruin family has helped me through so many things, so many guys that I can look across in this, in this uh, arena, coaches that have helped you through different times. That is what family is about. So you can take four versus 40, and you can say, where am I going to go? I'm going to go to Miami. I'm going to go somewhere else. No, I'm going to go to UCLA, because UCLA is going to take care of me, and I'm going to take care of it. The next thing I want to talk a little bit about is Coach had an affinity for country music, according to his wife and his daughters. And one of his favorite artists was Luke Combs. I don't know if he was the most famous, but he was famous. Now, I did say I grew up in Texas. So I knew country music, but now I wasn't really, I wasn't vibing with country music back then. But what I'll say now, if you listen to Chris Stapleton, he's a bad boy, right? Country music. But Luke Combs, let me get back to him before I digress. Luke Combs is from North Carolina. Did a little research on him, guys, so I wanted to know who he was. But he had a great song called Better Together. Let me just say the lyrics. I, I put them here so I wouldn't forget. Some things just go better together and probably always will, like a cup of coffee and a sunrise, Sunday drives, and time to kill. What's the point of this old guitar? If it ain't got no strings, or pouring your heart into a song that you ain't going to sing. It's a match made up in heaven, like good old boys and beer, as long as you're right here. That came from his daughter, Jennifer, who really just said this epitomized some of the things my dad really liked. And we, we were music crescendo guys. And he said this, this is the thing that he really enjoyed. 
and I appreciate her sending that to me. Lastly, I'm going to really talk about coaches' impact on players. You guys heard that from everybody, and I think that's really apparent. If you look around this room, you look at how he coached everyone. Terry said it best. Don't, let it, don't get it twisted with the tan and all of that. Coach was a fighter. He would fight you. We were talking about it earlier. We went over the wall, which we normally did in the spring. He was okay with that. We did it during the year. Man, I, it, some of the words that came out of his mouth, and I know he was a good Christian man, but he, he read the riot act to us. But that showed us one thing, his commitment, let's get the job done, let's, not, let's make sure we work when we work. I also think that's important because how do you impact people that come from everywhere? Houston, Texas, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Chicago, Illinois, Denver, Colorado, from right here in California. You impact them by touching not only the head, their heart, but their soul. That's what Terry Donahue did. He was able to do that in a way that was deft. You didn't always know he was coming at you with it, but he was able to do it. One of the things he always would say, things are not as good as they seem, things are not as bad as they seem. But when they seemed a certain way, and now that I'm 55, I really, really get what he was saying. The last thing I want to say, and I just want to ask you a question. Over his 20-year career, he had three 10-win seasons. Three 10-win seasons. Two of those came in 87 and 88. Josh talked about it. I say that to say we were a team that fought. 35 guys that went to the NFL during that stretch. I know guys before us had a lot and the guys after us. But I say that to say there was a tradition that was laid down by the Louis Sharps and all the guys that came before us, the Mark Harmons, everybody that came through this program that understood what it meant to be a Bruin. That's what I see with Coach Kelly doing now. I was out at practice. I'm telling y'all, these guys are ready to play. Jameer, you know. Othello, you know. The physicality that they bring. J-Dub and I always share those stories about how I was a young freshman and he wanted to beat me up and uh, on the field, beat me up, just be physical. But he said, I was raising you, and he was. This team is going to be good. It's going to be a great day tomorrow. They're going to beat Colorado. And I just want to say this. He's going to be pointing that way at Jackie Robinson. That's special, man. The reason I came to this school was Jackie Robinson, and the reason I love this school is because of Donahue and guys like you. Thank you. That's a man who obviously went to UCLA because he figured out something I could not, which is this microphone can be removed from this stand. <laughs> UCLA beats Northwestern again. It's like the Sun Bowl all over. Genius, that guy. All right. What, one more star to sparkle in your presence, college football and Rose Bowl Hall of Famer, quarterback the Bruins from 1972 to 1976, won the bowl game, the big one, this one, uh, under Coach Dick Vermeil with Coach Donahue second in command on that staff. That game, by the way, still stands as one of the biggest upsets in Rose Bowl game history. For what it's worth, before I bring this guy up here, when I broadcast the Mets games back in New York and was overlapping doing the radio here at UCLA, every single weekend, but I would come back from Pasadena. Keith Hernandez, who grew up in Northern California, now a popular Mets TV voice, he would ask me every single time I got back on a Sunday if I ran into his favorite all-time Bruin, John Shara. So, Keith, wherever you are, I'm seeing him right now. Here he is, the All-American John Shara. When Andrea asked me to say a few words about my relationship with Coach Terry Donahue, I told her I would be honored and privileged she told me that she would like someone who was older <laughs> that was recruited by Terry before he was a head coach. Terry was 28 years old in 1972 and was a second year assistant offensive line coach when he first started recruiting me. He was much more than a great football coach that posted 151 wins and the leader in the Pac-12 history with those wins. It was in mid-November in 1972 when I received a phone call at my house in Alhambra, California, which is just about 15, 20 minutes south of where we're sitting today. He called at 6 a.m. on a Monday morning. 
And my mother was awake because she used to get up early with my dad before he left for work. And she answered the phone. She came into my bedroom and said there was a man on the phone from UCLA. It was a coach. Get up. Now, it was a little late in the recruiting season, and I was being recruited by quite a number of schools, and I was somewhat surprised that I hadn't heard from UCLA. I had taken trips to Notre Dame, Nebraska, and was planning a trip to Washington State. Many, th many schools thought I was going to USC because of my relationship with Pat Hayden and John McKay at Bishop Beaumont High School. And that was one of the reasons why Coach Donahue said they hadn't contacted me. He mentioned that they were going to the wishbone offense and he thought that my skill set was perfect for that offense. The phone call went something like this. Hi, John. This is Coach Terry Donahue from UCLA. How are you doing this morning? Now, I'm thinking, what the heck, it's 6 a.m. But I said, I'm doing great. How are you? He then proceeded to say why he hadn't called, which was for the reasons I just mentioned. He said he wanted to take me to lunch, but I said it was a school day. He replied, I'm gonna call Monsignor Zimmerman, who is a principal at Bishop Ahmad. And he said, I'll coordinate with him. I'm sure he'll be fine with it. Just plan on being, just plan on me being at school at 12 noon, and you can meet me in the administrative offices, and we'll go from there. I'm thinking this guy is pretty confident that he could make this happen. And he did, and we went to lunch. From that day forward, I saw him at least three days a week and spoke with him just about every day that wasn't restricted by the NCAA. Obviously, UCLA has a lot to offer with its academic accreditation and social life. But it was Terry Donahue that convinced me to go to UCLA. He sincerely communicated how much I was wanted and needed. After I signed my letter of intent, he invited me over to his and Andrea's apartment, which was located in Fox Hills on the west side of Los Angeles. It was the first time I met Andrea. I'm thinking, wow, she is stunningly pretty and beautiful. This dude has it all together. <laughs> also, Andrea was pregnant with her oldest daughter, Nicole. And Nicole, I apologize, because I know it's not polite to ask or disclose a woman's age, but I'm thinking 51. <laughs> Terry Donnie, who is more than just a great football coach, he has tremendously impacted my life and many other student athletes. After I signed my letter of intent, he often came up to me when he saw me on campus and asked me how I was doing and if there was anything he could help me with. He didn't have to do that. He could have taken the position as mission accomplished once I had signed my letter of intent, but he didn't. He always reflected a true and sincere concern. When I became a starting quarterback, he would always say, like nobody else, see, Shara, I told you that UCLA was the place for you. Was I right? Now look at you, the starting quarterback. Well, how about that? I will always be thankful to Coach Donahue for the greatest event and most impactful thing that happened to me while I was attending UCLA. It was meeting my beautiful wife, Michelle. We've been married for 46 years, have three wonderful and beautiful children, seven grandchildren, and can't imagine my life being any better or blessed. I have Terry Donahue to thank for that. 
So when this well-deserved statue of Terry Dunn, he was unveiled today, just remember, he wasn't just a great football coach. He was a man of great character, as he had positive and personal impact on so many student athletes. We love you, Terry. Thank you. Uh, time to bring up our final speaker on behalf of the Donahue family. Uh, Andrea, as some of you know, most of you know, has three beautiful daughters. Uh, I'm not sure how the sweepstakes worked, but uh, the, the one that won the sweepstakes to come up and make this introduction, ladies and gentlemen, middle daughter, Michelle Donahue. Hello, and thank you for sharing in this incredible honor for my dad, sorry, Coach Terry Donahue. As I look around at the faces here today, there are so many familiar faces that have been a part of our family's lives for as long as I can remember. Decades and decades worth of memories. And each of us have our own unique, special memories with Coach, but I'm certain there's a few things we quickly learned about him that are consistent along the way. My dad, he was a plotter. He was a planner down to every last detail, and he loved to call team meetings. So, per usual, in my dad's last hours here on Earth, he called what would be his final team meeting. But this time, it was with his family. And he gave us a list of instructions. What was to happen when he was no longer here? And let me tell you, it was clear and it was simple. He wanted only a mass in he and my mom's home, which he so deeply loved. And he wanted to simply fade into the sunset, but live vibrantly in all of our hearts. So, as my dad, I'm sure, is looking down and saying, we did not stick to the game plan at all. <laughs> After thousands gathered to celebrate at his amazing celebration of life, here we are today with a seven foot bronze statue for him to welcome all into America's stadium. As a, being here in the Rose Bowl today, it just, it feels like home. Standing under this iconic Rose Bowl sign, it brings with it so many emotions. I can hear the sounds of both victory and defeat. I can look in this Bruin tunnel and I can see the Bruin football family gathered around after each game in support of hit the Bruins. And I can definitely feel the electrifying energy that naturally comes with being here at the Rose Bowl. I know that my mom, Nicole and Jennifer would also agree we vividly remember the endless post-game hours spent here right at this very tunnel. Running on the field, collecting sports tape in the locker room, being cordial to local media members, Yes, even those who did not hold a positive name in the Donahue home, we were still friendly, passing the time as we waited and waited and waited, Mom, for Dad to finally emerge. And the game's outcome often determined the events for our family that evening. With the win, the Donahue girls knew we were going to In-N-Out Burger. We were celebrating big. And we would even listen to talk radio and hear the hosts praise the Bruins and the masterminds behind the victory. And in the case of a loss, however, we went straight home. An hour and a half of complete silence in hopes of the same soggy turkey sandwich that all you football players receive too. <laughs> but despite the ups and downs, of living in a football world, ever changing week by week, this great game of football shaping our lives. I know I speak for many of you, certainly my mom, sisters, and extended family too. When I say that being part of the Bruin family and the ride that we got to live was definitively one of the greatest blessings ever bestowed upon us. 
Trust me, there is story after story to be told. It encompasses this tunnel right here. This is where all the stories began. This, this tunnel tells the story of my dad's life, of our family's life, and so many of your lives too. This tunnel gave us Donahue girls hundreds of brothers, second fathers and mothers, lifelong friends, and lots of coaches' kids to find mischief with at bowl games while the adults were off at team functions. This entrance holds so much history. And now the statue, this reminder of legacy, it guides the way for future generations. It directs them into the most iconic stadium in the country, America Stadium, where we know that legacy lives on and new dreams are unveiled. I'd like to take a moment and recognize where these dreams for the Donahue family began. My dad was born the second of five sons to Dr. Bill and Betty Donahue. Together, they created a home defined by love, faith, and unconditional support. They lived life by example and ingrained in their boys the importance of family and of brotherhood. While my dad is joyfully among his parents and his oldest brother, Dan, his three brothers, my amazing uncles, are here today, Pat, Tim, and Mick, and their families, once again supporting their brother, Terry, and holding true to the band of brothers that my grandparents so deeply instilled. At the young age of 23, my dad's life changed forever when he met Andrea Sogas. Together, they began a new chapter in life and became a team of all teams, living an incredible journey together for the next 52 years, touched the lives of thousands of people from all walks of life along the way. My parents continued a decades-long love affair with UCLA. For Coach Terry Donahue, UCLA was home. It was all he ever needed or wanted. As a student, assistant coach, and head coach, UCLA was the place he wanted to be. Pepper Rogers, Dick Vermeil, J.D. Morgan, and the late Charles Young. These are just a few of the many names that changed my dad's life forever. He was the youngest ever NCAA head football coach, and he put his whole heart into building a program rooted in tradition, passion, and commitment. However, today is more than just about UCLA and my dad's love affair with UCLA. It's about legacy. Legacy that is not simply defined by wins or losses, but the lives that were touched and forever changed by one man. He was entrusted by fathers, mothers, grandfathers to care for their children. And as a father, he did not take that role lightly. He and my mom together, they loved, nurtured, and mentored their players during these most impressionable years of their lives. And I remember from a young age, the holiday season in the Donahue house was synonymous with UCLA football. Late November marked cross-town rivalry week with the SC Trojans. And even though the holidays were upon us, there was absolutely no red in the Donahue house whatsoever. <laughs> but whether it was gathering around the Thanksgiving table with players who weren't able to go home for the holiday, or singing Christmas carols at the Holiday Inn in Westwood at team parties, and sometimes even in our home, the Donahue home that I grew up in, my parents always had an open door policy to any player or Bruin football family member who didn't have a place to go to come to our home and be part of our family. And then December 26, we kicked off bowl game extravaganza. And as you're gonna see here shortly with the statue unveiling from Pasadena, the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, 
Tempe, the Fiesta Bowl, Dallas, the Cotton Bowl, San Diego, the Freedom Bowl, Oahu, the Aloha Bowl, and El Paso, the Sun Bowl. It was quite a run. In addition to furthering his players' athletic talents, he believed his responsibility was much greater than that, one that stretched beyond the here and now of this life. My dad believed each young man had a purpose, and it was his goal to find their purpose and make them be the best version of themselves. Faith set the foundation for which he led his teams. He led by example, not empty instructions. Integrity, humility, sacrifice, unconditional love. The same lessons the Bible teaches, he innately defined. He also believed in the importance of adversity because only with adversity does the human spirit grow. During his tenure, UCLA was synonymous with tradition, opportunity, and family. It is why we are all here today. Tradition is what embodies the gutty little Bruin. Tradition is what encompasses the Rose Bowl Legacy Foundation and its mission to carry on the legacy of those that have come before us in sports and in life. And it is here at America's stadium that over millions and millions of people have watched over the last 100 years as sports has laid the foundation on which barriers have been broken and people, humanity, have come together as one. UCLA is what brought us all together. But over the years, it's the relationships that made us family. My sister Nicole said it best, when she said that living this type of life, everything had to revolve around football. But my dad made each moment count. Each moment with family, each moment with friends, each moment with players and coaches alike. In the end, life is about time. It was and still is one of the greatest gifts that you can not only give yourself, but to others. Players, coordinators, position coaches, managers, equipment team, grounds crews, sports information team, travel team, academic support, and so many more. Now, most of you know my dad was not great with names. It definitely wasn't his strong suit. He always had my mom and Jolie to make him look good. But the one thing that was certain is there was not a day that went by, not a single one, that my dad didn't recognize the nucleus of people surrounding him, supporting him, and giving him every opportunity to be successful. Speaking of teams, the entire Donahue family would like to acknowledge the team that brought this statue to life. All of the donors, this honor is beyond anything that we could have ever imagined. On behalf of my dad, Coach Terry Donahue, the family, and all who loved him and knew him, and the many more who will now learn about his legacy, thank you. And to the Rose Bowl Foundation, Daryl Dunn, Jens Wyden, Deedon Brazino and Kelly Gill. You're all over here. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your persistence. Thank you for your vision. And thank you for your kindness. It has been incredible getting to spend the last two years with you. Who would have ever guessed that we would be here? And last, but certainly not least, I want to acknowledge the sculpture who managed insurmountable amounts of input from all of us. Videos, pictures, unbelievable details, you name it. He spent endless hours learning about the essence of my dad. Brian Hanlon, I don't know where you are. I've been looking for you all afternoon, but you are such a gift. 
God has blessed you to touch the lives of other people. These gifts reach beyond your masterpiece. They touch the heart and soul of people. You bring to life all that is good and true. You have forever etched my dad, Coach Terry Donahue, into the hearts of all of us and for generations to come. So thank you. In closing, I would like to share a quote with you that was often stated in our home. And this quote originated from after my dad retired from UCLA. See, although he was excited for new adventures, leaving UCLA, all he had ever known and loved, it was bittersweet. Because that day that he left, he also left a piece of his heart behind. And when reflecting on it, this quote actually rings true to many aspects of life, even losing someone that you love. As each of us ponder our unique relationship with Coach, that one thing that will forever resonate in your heart, I ask of you what I ask of myself to remember this. Don't cry because it's over, but smile because it happened. Dad, we are all so proud to have shared in your journey at UCLA and in life. Your 151 wins, seven consecutive bowl victories, winning 10-9-1 record against the USC Trojans, it solidified you as the Pac-10 winningest coach in history. But the true essence of you, Dad, is what makes this immeasurable honor bespoke upon you today all the more appropriate. Thank you for giving us the gift of sharing in your life with wonderful you. We love you forever. All right, so as we get ready to take a peek, and I'm gonna ask in a moment for Andrea and for the grandkids to join if they'd like so they can be close. Which of you grandkids is good at math, by the way? You are, you are? Okay, follow me on this real quick. 100 years of the Rose Bowl, right? Take a look up where it says Rose Bowl. The tunnel numbers to the left and to the right, 25 and 26. What's that up, add up to? 25 and 26. 25 plus 26, 51? In 100 years at the Rose Bowl, what's 100 plus 51? 151? Whoa. 151 wins, 151 roses. Let's take a look. Guys, if you want to come up, Andrea, if you would like to come up, let's see this thing. Now you'll notice the statue is surrounded by 151 bronze roses and five footballs. And here's what that represents. The, the detail is incredible. The open roses, those represent the home victories. The closed roses, those are the road victories. The blue roses, those are the bowl game wins. The red roses represent the Rose Bowl game victories. And the five footballs point directly to Coach Donahue's conference championships as the leader of the program. So there he is. That's Coach Terry Donahue. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Come get your pictures taken. Let's, let's enjoy each other just as Coach would want us to do. Cheers. Thank you all for being here. Good day.